It's 12 o'clock and it's that time when we all take a moment away from the hustle and bustle of the day to get refreshed meditating on the word of God in season. Welcome to lunch. We broadcast 12 noon every weekday bringing you words from different denominations and helping you fight the good fight of faith. Oh my Lord, sing Last week, we met with Dr. Eric Ibebu, my big brother, mentor, and pastor. One thing I didn't tell you, though, is that Eric's wife operates in the office of a prophet. A very big welcome, Pastor Thank Shirley. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, the office of a prophet is not a very popular office today. How did you get here? Oh, well, as, uh, oh, my my walk with the Lord has been one of him speaking to me. Um, you know, the Bible says that God is a voice. And uh, the thing about it is that we are so caught up in all the other voices around us that we do not know how to be still and um, tame, tame the noises that we can be just quiet on the inside and hear the voice of God. Because he's always speaking if only people would listen. And so, at least I didn't know I was operating in the office of, of the prophet until after I was saved, um, I began to sing a song which was from uh, the book of Jeremiah, um, or oh, the word of the Lord deep within my being. And as I began to sing that, I realized it was the song of the young prophet. And um, little by little, God began to speak to me and tell me that, you know, this is the office he wanted me to operate in. And I was, First I was like, God, how can I tell people about the future? But it's not really that the modern day prophet literally breaks the word down in such little pieces, rightfully dividing the word of God. And so that is what it, it's really. It's not about self, it's not about uh, self motives, I should say, but it's more along the lines of hearing what God is saying for this season. You know, um, m my husband shared a tremendous message just recently and he was talking about all the different books in the Bible and he says it starts with Genesis and the Genesis of time, the very beginning, and then it goes on and it ends in Revelation. And uh, the, the book of Revelation itself, the word talks about vision and to be able to see. So this is a season when we're able to see clearly what God is is doing and why he had from the very beginning, he was speaking to us about how to get to the point of seeing. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where we can't see, he, the word says clearly that we will perish. We will have no hope, no future. And so God really wants all of us, each and every one of us to be able to see. So did you have to do anything at all to get this gift manifested or this calling? I, I, I didn't really have, um, a call of salvation. I didn't go to a church. I was in a traditional church and God literally met me in my bedroom. And um, he, it was a great introduction where, you know, for the first time I realized the reality of God. And of course, you've been taught about God and you, 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 you hear so many things and you hear so many scriptures, but to taste, he says, and see that the Lord is good, taste and see, you first, for you, like I started off talking about vision, for you to see, you have to taste. And God says, taste me so that you will know exactly what you're looking at. And so it was a, it was a lot that God had to teach me. Um, and the first thing he began teaching me was silence. And so it meant my, my time with God began in the wee hours of the morning. He began to take me back until I got to the wee hours of the morning. And I had to taste silence. I had to, to taste quietude. And in that quietude, I began to realize that there was a, a space or a place where I can hear the voice of God. And then he took me into loud places and I, can, I could have heard his voice even in the midst of noises. And so sometimes when people are speaking to me um, and they're asking me stuff, I'm hearing the voice of God talking to me about what to say, you know, and what not to say, you know, or should I say more or less along the lines of what to say, 
you know. So it's a it was a training process. It took about four years, and it was um, he he had to teach me the word also because he led me to the word, his word, and learning his word. As you begin to read it, it begins to cleanse you, and as it cleanses you you begin to see things differently. Um, so, you know, the word says uh, that uh, the word of God is a sword dividing the bone and the marrow, the soul and the spirit. That cannot be done by flesh and blood. It can only be done by the word of God. And so that was what God began to do with my life and began to actually teach me how to hear his voice. So it was four years of training. Four years of training. Direct so, from God, or? Yes. So it was from about 2, th two 2 in the morning all the way on to 6, 6 every morning for four years without um, a Sabbath, a Sunday, or a Saturday. Um, just four years constantly studying the Word of God. And in it all, it was God teaching me His way and His Word. Did you have an idea of the end results why you were going through this training? You, you know, the, that's a good question. I, I never really thought about what the end would bring. I was, so, I was so caught up in the present, in the, you know, the word says that he is the I am that I am. As we take each moment and we live it in the I am, it will take us into a, f a very dynamic future that we do not even know how to ask. We cannot even comprehend it. So we cannot, most people tend to look at, okay, God, where am I going in the future? Um, what am I to do in the future? But God says, I am that I am. And so if we take each moment, one day at a time, each moment, time, after time, we realize one day we are in a future that we didn't even know how to ask. We didn't even know how to think. We didn't even know how to perceive it. And so a lot of people look for God in, in the immediate. I have seen where God has spoken things to me. It never happens in the immediate. It, there is a preparation to get to, to the what God has for us. And our timing is not His timing. And that is the difference with how we must perceive God. We cannot perceive him as, well, you know, um, I'm going to get a job um, that's going to pay me uh, three-digit figures. Um, and we think, well, okay, he said it, so it's going to happen instantly. God has to prepare us, each and every one of us, to receive what he has for us. So as, as we go along and he gives us that word for the, for the now, you have to know within your heart, he's taking me somewhere in the future. You know, the word of God says, he says, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future. It's all about hope in God. And, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's you know, like recently I, I was going over Genesis again and there was something that spoke mightily to me when, uh, Abraham, Abraham at the time encountered, Mel, encountered Melchizedek, who was the priest and the king of Salem, which is Jerusalem today. You see him now giving Abraham, giving uh, Melchizedek uh, a tenth of everything he had plundered. And then, um, but the tenth came after the king and the priest fed him, gave him drink, and blessed him, you know. Um, so we we have to be careful even of of how we pay tithes. Like you know, I heard my husband on the last program discussing with you know with you about tithing, and we have to you know d make up in our minds how to give our tithes. We have to be fed, be given the wine, the joy of the word, because you know God teaches right? But as he teaches, the thing about him is that when God holds you like this and he begins to press you, that he is still upholding you, right? So he allows us the opportunity to be pressed because nobody likes to be pressed. To be on the potter's wheel, we are, you know, there are so many things God is pressing out of our lives that he can mold the new you us. Amen. Right? And so at the end of the day, 
uh, when, 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 when we sit, when God puts us on his wheel, on the potter's wheel, he is there to press us. Amen. A vessel of honor, that's what he calls us. Vessels of honor that he, he will place on the potter's wheel. Um, if anyone has ever observed the way uh, vessels are made on a clay wheel, on a potter's wheel, um, it's, it's slapped. Then you, the, 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 the potter takes water, which is the word of God, and begins to slap the clay, right? And then with his hands begin to, one he's holding and the other one he is molding. And so um, God had to do those things in my life because we all uh, are brought up in different cultures, different, um, different beliefs. And so as we, we are brought up with those, God has to begin to get certain things. We go through things in life or we go through, we have a past which has, has done some things in our lives. And when God, when we give God our lives, he begins to take, and he begins to take the word of God. He upholds us. He takes the word of God. He begins to hit us with it. And then he begins to mold us. And so we have to all be molded because, you know, as we go back into Genesis again, Genesis is just a beautiful book to me. Um, he says, let us now make man into our image and likeness. And, you know, a lot of people, to me, that word should be interpreted. Man is there. And then now God is going to make him and bring out the God in him because we all have divinity within us. Once we were made by God, we are all God's creation, but we all have to become his sons and daughters. And so we have to be allow, he has, we have to allow him and not fear it. That's why a lot of people run away from the gospel because they don't look at it as a, as a gospel of hope. It's like, it's gonna slap me in the face and I don't wanna be slapped. And our, our role as Christians is to begin to recognize it's okay to be slapped because we want the flesh. The apostle Paul said daily, I, I beat my flesh into submission. So daily, daily, just like manna, um, his mercies are fresh and new every morning. Daily we need his mercies to be able to push the flesh out and let the spirit man rise up. Because the spirit man is going to take us places that we cannot even begin to dream or think of or even you know, conceptualize what God has in store for them that love him. It's such a blessing to have you on the program, Pastor Shelley. Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting with us. I normally ask our guests to pray over our viewers' businesses and careers. All right, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for every career-minded person. Father, we give you these careers, we give you these businesses, we dedicate them unto you, and we ask you, O oh God, to take it and make it into all that you have called it to be in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, please feel free to like it, share it, and comment on it. We'll see you again soon. Bye.